Are you hungry? Give me something, something good. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Girl Cups. Today we're baking, and we're baking my favorite sourdough bread. And this is a bread I've probably baked, I would say it's every weekend for three years now. So I'm up to about 150 times. And the more you bake it, the more you kind of optimize. And I'm at a level where I think it's the ultimate way of making it. And it's the perfect bread for me. Now, I'm not a master baker. Some of you might be much better at baking than me. And you might shake your head at what I'm doing. But this loaf really works. And I think it's a perfect loaf in terms of hydration, in terms of, um, what do you call it, the, the, the size of the holes in the bread. And it's a simple bread. There's one, two, three, four, five ingredients if you count water. But before we have a look at the ingredients in detail, as always, if you're not doing so yet, please hit the subscribe button and check the bell icon so that you get notifications. But now let's have a quick look. We're gonna need 24 grams of salt. We're gonna need 165 grams of Levito Madre, mother yeast. So it's not sourdough starter. Sourdough starter has a higher hydration, but I prefer Levito Madre. It's the same principle though. And this has been alive for I think four years now. And we have two kinds of flour. We have normal plain flour, and we have flour with a bit, it's, it's between plain and whole grain. Not sure what you would call it uh, in, in English. Um, here it's called Ruchmehl. And of course we need water. But we'll first start with diluting our Levito Madre in water. So we have a big bowl to mix in. We have our scale underneath, it's set to zero. We're gonna need 800 grams of lukewarm water. Under seven works as well. We zero it out. Now to this we add 165 grams of lievito madre. Perfect. Now we can remove the scale. And all we're doing now is dissolving the Levito Madre in the lukewarm water. The easiest is to use a whisk. And the idea behind this is to kind of let the Levito Madre from coming into contact with the lukewarm water start already its process. So now we've dissolved it fully. We don't need the whisk anymore. We're not gonna need any tools anymore. We can put this to the side a bit. And we'll leave this to do its magic for 10 minutes now. In the meantime, we can measure up the salt and the water we're gonna add in a second step uh, once we've hydrated the flour. So I'll take really hot water and we need 45 grams. Forty-seven works as well, and we just add the salt, and then we we'll leave this on the side. Our water and yeast mixture has been standing for ten minutes. Now it's time to add the flour. We need four hundred sixty grams of each. Sorry, four hundred sixty-five grams of each. So that was 466, so let's maybe try to get 464 out of this. But it's not that important to be 100% exact. Four hundred sixty-five. 
Now we can get rid of our scale. We don't need it anymore. And with your hands, just mix all the flour in with the water and the yeast, or mother yeast. And then we're going to leave it to hydrate after that. I have one of these dough scrapers just to scrape my hands afterwards. And maybe to scrape the rim of the bowl. So now we probably won't make a mess anymore. And I'll try to make this with spread fingers. So get the fingers in there. And just mix it until you have the feeling that it's well mixed. And this is why I have the dough scraper. So clean my hands again. Let's just scrape down the edges. Get yourself a tea towel and cover it. And now we're going to hydrate for 35 minutes. So I'll see you once we've done that. So our 35 minutes of hydration have passed. It's time for the salt water solution. And again, with your hand, just really mix the salt water in there. I do it with like a grabbing motion at the beginning. And now with, again, spread fingers. And we scrape it off again. And we can scrape the rim. We cover it again. Now we'll let it rest for 45 minutes. And then we're going to do our first stretch and fold. I'll see you in 45 minutes. We wait till 45 minutes, and it's time for our first stretch and fold. I always wet my hands a little bit. And this, I think, is where the biggest change is since I started baking bread. And that's how I stretch and fold. I do it this way because I think it's easier to get the dough out as much as possible. Don't worry if it breaks. You can see it already has quite a nice elasticity to it. And now we just fold it in over. Form it, shape it back. And, well, I don't want to put the bowl there, but I'm putting this back in the bowl. And I just put that on top. We cover it. And we'll let it rest for another 45 minutes. In the meantime, I will clean the counter. Another 45 minutes have passed. It's time for a second stretch and fold. And we just do the same as the first time. Try not to break it. Not that it matters too much, but it's always nice if we can keep it more or less whole. We're already getting quite a good gluten going so that it's nice and oh, what would you call it flexible. As you can see, I'm not that much of a militant sourdough baker. I don't know all the lingo that you're supposed to know, but I do make a damn good bread. And I think that's the most important part. So as last time, we put it back, we cover it, we wait another 45 minutes. In the meantime, I will clear the, clear the bench again. See in 45. And we're ready for stretch and fold number three. Little air bubble there. And 
and exactly the same procedure as last time. It's really getting pretty nice and elastic. I always really enjoy this part because you kind of you get a feel for how the dough is and as you can see you know it's you can see my finger through there well now I broke but I think we don't need to stretch and fold much more so this is the third time so all that's left to do now is to leave it for another 45 minutes And then we'll shape it and put it in the basket. So see in 45. So now all that's left is to shape it and put it in the proofing basket. And again, there's like a whole mastery on how you should shape or not shape, but all I do is pull it, kind of turn it and pull it back towards me. And that's all I want. Now we're putting this into the proofing basket. We'll cover this, let it stand for about an hour an hour and a half depending on temperature, but it's getting a bit warmer, so we'll check it after an hour, and then it goes into the fridge. I'll see you in an hour. So let's get rid of the towel, and we're gonna cover it with some aluminum foil. And that's all the prep you need to do. It's very easy, but you need a bit of time, because there's a couple of steps that you need time in between. And now this goes into the fridge to proof for 36 hours. I tend to proof either between 36 or 72, somewhere there in between. But this time it's going to be 36. So I see you in a day and a half. Need a Dutch oven. By the way, it's 5 to 7 on Saturday morning, so I'm a little bit tired. This is the time I normally bake on Saturdays. Now, preheat your oven with your Dutch oven in the oven at 270 degrees. That's as high as my oven goes, upper lower heat, 270 degrees for half an hour. I've seen half an hour. We're gonna need some baking paper and we're gonna need to crumble it up. And this is so that it fits the loaf nicer in the Dutch oven. Then just flatten it out again. And now let's get our bread out. And this always takes a bit of time, well, not long, but the dough normally gets stuck in the aluminum. So take your dough scraper and just loosen it from the Aluminium foil. There you go. And now we use the dough scraper. I hope you can see it just to make sure that it doesn't get stuck to the basket. Go all the way around. Like that. And now we're gonna turn it upside down onto the baking paper. And before we lift it now, we're gonna take the Dutch oven out. So we can just lift it into the Dutch oven afterwards. Get the lid off. 
and we're going to need something sharp. I have a razor blade or a razor that I use to cut into the bread. And I got this one for my 40th birthday of a good friend. Thank you, Ben. But as you see, I don't shave a lot, so I'm using it for my bread instead. go. Just do a cut straight over. Now we collect the four corners and we put it into the Dutch oven. Get the lid back on and it goes back into the oven for 30 minutes. Then we're going to take it out, remove it from the Dutch oven, and put it back in. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. So, half an hour. Now we're going to take it out. Remove the paper. Stick it back in. And depending on the crust you want, the color of the crust, I would say anything between 20 and 25 minutes now. I usually do 25 because I like it very dark. And it's still at 270 degrees. And now one thing you should get is one of these. But if you don't have one of these, for Many months I used to just chuck some water in to get a bit of steam, but we'll use this now. To create a bit of steam in there. Normally I do the same after 10 minutes again. So I'll see you once this is done in, for me, 25 minutes. But for you, check it out 20 and see if you're happy or if you want 25. And then we have a ready bread. And here we are. Put it on the cooling rack. And it's funny, I mean, this is kind of a living thing. So it's, although I made this, yeah, more or less 150 times, it looks a little bit different every time. I mean, today we have a air bubble here. But I think we got a good rise on it. Now we just have to be patient. Probably take an hour or so for this to cool down. But once it's done, we're going to cut it going to put some salted butter on it and we're going to taste it and I'll show you what it looks like inside the crumb it's quite a tight crumb but that's what I like I like the butter to have something to go on to I don't like this modern breads with huge crumb holes in them and you try to butter them and it just falls down the other side so I'll show you the kind of crumb I prefer I'll see in about an hour or two so our bread has cooled down before we try this, we're going to slice it up, put some butter on it and give it a try. But before we do that, if you're stuck with it this far, as always, there must have been something you enjoyed about this episode. So do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. It's just down there. It takes you a second, but it's really valuable for me. So please do that. But now let's cut into this. And this is what I enjoy. The crumb is not too big. It's perfect for when you make sandwiches. The butter stays on there, but it's still nice, moist, and soft. And the good thing when you make bread like this is it keeps for a couple of days, much longer than bread bought in the store. We get a good slice. Get our salted butter. So it's still a little bit, I wouldn't say, yeah, warm. That's all we need. Cheers. It's perfect. 
Now I'm sure there are many sourdough militants out there who's going to find a hundred mistakes that I made along the line. But I made this loaf for 150 times at least. And to me, this is the perfect sourdough bread. Mm. It's moist, this has good hydration. The crumb is perfect. I enjoy the crust too. It's dark. And for the rest of my family on Saturdays, there's nothing nicer than waking up to an apartment smelling like freshly baked bread. So if you're into sourdough baking and you haven't arrived at the perfect loaf for you yet, give this a try. See what you think. To me, it doesn't get better than this. But that's it for this time. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit the subscribe button and check the bell icon. And do leave me a comment below, either a question you have or some feedback about the episode. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.